probably take your copy back to the store because this was back in the olden days when they had stores. What's the best way to kill your own video game? That's what we're gonna talk about today. I've actually kind of experienced this myself and I've got a little bit of a story to tell about it. But first, if you've got an idea for what you think is the easiest way to just ruin a game or destroy a game's launch, drop it down in the comments. I'm curious to see if it matches up with what I'm about to say or what other ideas there are. And if you got nothing, then please just hit the like button and subscribe. This is the first AAA game that I ever got to work on. Vanguard Saga of Heroes. It's kind of dear to my heart. It was a game that I was into and kind of obsessed with before I got onto the team. It's an MMORPG built by the same guys that built a lot of EverQuest, or at least a, a good chunk of those people kind of went off and built another game kind of in that same vein, a big open world exploration thing with housing everywhere and, and lots of cool, unique concepts at the time. It was built in Unreal, Unreal like I guess 2.5. And on the initial launch, including the pre-sales, it did really well. It sold 242,000 copies, probably over 250,000. But the number of active subscribers quickly dropped down to 130,000. And then within a few months, it was down to, it says here 40,000. I think that's a, a bit of a drop. It didn't go quite that fast, but it did drop really quick. Half of the people, as you can see, basically didn't even continue on for a month. Now, the reason for that isn't as complicated as people might think. A lot of people think, oh, well, you know, it was too hard, too complicated. They couldn't figure things out. Maybe they were confused or whatever. Nope, none of that. The number one reason, performance. Yep, over 100,000 of them quit just because of performance. And when I say performance, I mean it was bad. The performance issue for these people was so bad that they basically couldn't play the game. Now, if you were a developer working on it, you wouldn't know because you're running 60, 90 frames a second on your badass development system. But for these other people, these regular old users who are trying to play the game, things were falling apart. And there are a couple of reasons. And today I'll dive into what those reasons were in this specific case. And I want to give you a couple practical ways that to avoid this for your own games. There's actually some really simple stuff that you can do to make this not be a problem for your own games and to avoid at least this one way of ruining your game. Before I dive into the details, if you're looking to meet other game developers, make sure you check out the game dev meetup down below. It's totally free once a month. And if you're looking to learn more about game development, check out the courses down there as well. There are some paid ones as well as some good free beginner courses. When it comes to bad performance, there are usually two key culprits. There's either bad performance in the rendering side, the GPU side, you're overloading the video card, usually by drawing too much or drawing things unoptimally or just bad things that you're drawing. There, there are a lot of different issues that can come up when it comes to rendering that can kill your frame rate. And then you can also kill your frame rate by killing the CPU or the processor. Now with Vanguard, the issue wasn't so much in the rendering side. A lot of the rendering stuff was already kind of dealt with by Unreal and it had been optimized pretty well. The graphics programmers on the team were really damn good and had kind of pushed the visuals while keeping the performance, I think, relatively well. I mean, Kevin might correct me and say, hey, the performance was not great. It could have been much better. But I think that they did a relatively great job of making it look good and perform well on the GPU side. There was, however, a major problem on the CPU side. It didn't matter what your video card was, you could have had the best video card ever. If your CPU couldn't handle this one little problem, uh, the game was going to fall apart. You were gonna get one frame a second, unsubscribe and probably take your copy back to the store because this was back in the olden days when they had stores. The code that was causing this terrible frame rate wasn't really core to the game. It was something that most MMOs have, but it could have definitely done without. If you've got an idea what that is, please drop a comment down below and guess. I'm curious to see if anybody's gonna guess this one because it's a little bit strange. The issue was actually in the UI code. The game had a customizable UI like most MMOs do so that players could go build their own UI that looks or feels a little bit different and maybe has some slightly different interactions. And you might think, oh, well, maybe there was some weird scripting or something going on in there, some interactions that players were creating, or maybe the default UI had some weird interactions going on there. Nope. Nothing even that complicated. 
the actual deep dive issue, if you look right down at the code, was that the UI code was written to do some string-based comparisons to check against elements and their values and update them every single frame. So every element would do a string compare against its things that it needed to check against every possible variable every frame, which led to about a million string compares a frame, which if your system is great, won't be a problem. If you got a nice high-end quad-core dev system, you're good to go. But if you're running on a nice old single-core or dual-core systems that were really common back then, your system was probably going to fall apart. In fact, most of them did, and that's what caused the frame rates to drop down to one frame a second. The fix for this was relatively simple. Changing the strings to an enum was a nice big fix, and I believe that Jared might have done some other optimizations to switch it to be a little more event-driven later, but I'll let him correct me on that. I'm not completely sure where he ended up. I know that the switching just to enumerations or enums was enough to fix most of the performance issue and knock that thing off the profiler. And that's what I want to talk about today, the profiler, because that's how Jared found the issues with this game, how he figured out what the problem was. Unfortunately, he joined the team after it launched and after all these people had left and he knew it was a giant issue. But you can stop yourself from having that problem and find these issues before Beforehand. To do that, you're going to want to use the same technique that Jared did and use a profiler. Luckily, Unity's profiler is free even without Pro, so you can use it right now and figure out what's going on in your game and fix these problems before anything comes up. Back in the day, we had to use, I think it was Intel's VTune, which was some insane cost, and there are some other profilers out there that were pretty expensive back in the day, but now the engines seem to have these built in. So let's take a look at a nice example here. I've got an older build of one of my games where the performance is really, really bad. If I press play, you should see that we get about maybe, I don't know, two, maybe 10 frames a second. It'll quickly drop down. It's going to go slower and slower. You can see it's, it's like seven or eight. It's going to drop down lower and lower and lower. And if I want to fix this, I got a couple options. I could go guess wildly guess and choose things that, hey, maybe my space station needs to change. Or again, go to my profiler to open the profiler, or go to window, analysis, and profiler. Or it looks like control seven is the default hotkey. Drag my profiler window over here. And then I start to see these giant bars and get totally confused and go, oh no, what do I do? I've got a bunch of giant bars here. What does all this nonsense mean? First, I'm going to drag this bottom piece down just a little bit. I'm going to cover up that memory part. Don't really care about it yet. All I care about is CPU usage and rendering. Then I'm going to stop by clicking on any one of these frames. When I clicked, it grabbed my game view. So I'm going to take my game view, just drag it out of the way so it doesn't pop up on top of me again. Now that I've got my profiler here, I can see a lot of details about what's going on. Specifically, in this little grid view down below, the one that I drug up, you can grab it right here to drag it up, you can see the amount of time spent in the player loop, the amount of time spent in the editor loop, and the amount of time doing some other profiling related stuff. You don't care about those. You can also see garbage collection allocations. We'll talk about those in a moment. Now, the first thing that you'll want to do is expand out this player loop. Underneath the player loop, you should see the script runtime behavior. That might be further down depending on how you've got it sorted. If you're sorted by time and your worst thing is going to be at the top, it's probably going to be a script run behavior. It's possible, however, though, that inside this script run, instead of script run behavior, sorry, not inside, you have camera render. In that case, you'll need to deal with your rendering issues. Those ones I'm not going to talk about today, but if you're interested in that, let me know and I'll do another video diving into how to deal with rendering related performance issues. We're going to talk more about the script and code side now. So if you've got your script run behavior update and you expand it out, you'll see behavior update, expand it out a little bit more, and I can see the actual specific scripts, but not a lot of details on what's causing these lines. I know that something in my station spawner is slow, it's getting called once, and it's taking 129 milliseconds, which is huge. I want to take like one or two milliseconds. So how do I figure this out? Well, first thing I need to do is stop playing and check the deep profile button. This is the number one tip. If you learn anything from this video, remember that the deep profile button needs to be on to see anything useful, and it's always off by default. So you always got to go check it, turn it on if you want to debug any of your scripting stuff. Now if I press play, this is going to reset. I should be able to click on a frame and pause it and we'll talk about those in just a moment. Let's see, let's let it go. Runs through, get some new frames over here. 
And we'll just let a couple more frames come by. We'll click on one. And then here I can see the amount of time being spent in it. Let's see, scroll up top. I can see the amount of time being spent is 655 milliseconds, which is over half a second. 500 milliseconds is half a second, so we're already past that. But now I can expand it out. And inside of the update, I can see I've got my tick all method. And inside of that, I'm calling a for each that calls a tick method, which calls a tick on my station AI. So that's getting called 51 times and taking up the majority of this time. There's still 191 milliseconds down here. But when you're profiling, what I prefer to do is look at the big things first, knock them out. Go figure out what all of the big things are that are taking up a large amount of time. Get those knocked out so that then the next biggest thing will pop up and be the big one and just kind of work the way down the line instead of focusing on the small things first. So we'll expand it out some more. You can see that it's got a place resources for sale method and underneath there is a calculate price and underneath there is a calculate price ratio that's getting called 255 times and underneath there is a calculate total supply that's getting called 255 times. And if you're thinking about these and looking at the names of these methods, some things might stand out to you. Do we really need to calculate the total supply 255 times a frame? Probably not. Do we need to calculate the total demand 255 times a frame? Probably not. We probably don't need to calculate the sale price. We can probably do a lot of this once per frame and just cash it. And most of the time, that's what I'm looking for. Opportunities to avoid calling something by caching it, or maybe even to just completely avoid calling something. Now, sometimes there are deeper details. I'll find a method that's doing something dumb, like logging out a debug log, or maybe calling find objects somewhere in my hot path. And if you're not familiar with the hot path, it's essentially code that's called commonly or regularly. So things that are maybe in your update or in maybe a common tick, or getting called when an object is instantiated that's instantiated regularly. Those would be considered in the hot path. Things that are called only on setup and initialization, like in a start method of something that's in your scene, would not be considered a hot path. So I don't try to optimize those non-hot path parts, but if I find something that's kind of bad or slow inside the hot path, and try to knock that down as well. But again, always want to start with the biggest thing, whatever's at the top of the the chart. And it's also important to note that when you're looking at the chart and you're going through, you'll want to go frame by frame. So you can take this little slider here and drag it along. You can also use the, um, the little frame key right here. Let's see, go right here and go all the way to a frame or go previous frame or next frame. So you can go all the way through frames, one, one frame at a time or all the way to the end. And then you can see the actual data per frame. You'll see that this changes sometimes depending on your game. Sometimes your game might have a big spiky frame where you've got a big giant blue line, and then you can just go address that and you, well, you can easily see those too because they'll show up nice here. Now let's take a look at a newer version of the project where performance is better a little bit, but we've got totally different issues. So I'm gonna hit play. And then we'll show our stats window. Let's get rid of this little buy window here. You can see that really nothing is going on. I've got a lot of UI elements, but nothing is happening yet. And my frame rate is at nine frames a second. There aren't even any spaceships flying around or any AI going on. So let's go to the profiler and see what's happening. If I jump over to the profiler, if I click it, I expect it's going to jump back over to that game view. Let's see. Click go to the game view, but I go back to my profiler and take a look and I can see here that, oh, what is this? We're now spending 24 milliseconds in player update canvases. And our script runtime behavior is actually nice and low. So that's all of my AI and code logic. That looks pretty low, 1.59. But we're spending 2.9 or 29 milliseconds in our loop and it's looked largely because of something with the canvases. So that leads me to believe, okay, well, something's going on in my UI. Let's take a deeper look. Let's expand that out hit the right arrow. So the best way to do this, again, right, select it and just hit the right arrow and down. Right arrow down, right arrow down, and keep going until you see something that makes sense. So it's doing something. Ah, it's rebuilding Text Mesh Pro U GUI layouts. And that's taking 22 milliseconds and eight calls. And I've got some big text stuff here, like this giant leaderboard debug stuff that I slapped up there. So let's turn that off. Go select my debug leaderboard, uncheck it unpause, go back to my profiler, and whoa, look at that, you can see the drop already. Go back over to the profiler, and look at that, that number is still high, but it's down a bit. So I can see that I'm actually dropping it, and what I probably need to do is go through and 
fix up some more UI elements. I think that there are probably a couple other UI elements that are spamming, updating the text mesh pro text every frame. So I can just knock those out. Let's see what else we have in here though. Cause there was one other thing that I want to mention before we wrap this video up. And that's with the garbage allocations. You see this GC alloc column. This column actually matters too. It doesn't matter as much if you're running on a high-end Windows PC. The allocators pro or the garbage collector is probably going to deal with some level of allocations. But as soon as you hit mobile or AR devices, VR devices, then this becomes a huge deal. And even on consoles, it's a big problem. So you want to minimize or reduce this. And here you can see that in my script runtime behavior, I'm allocating a little bit, ah, again, in set text and in a string builder. So I'm going to want to remove both of those. A lot of the times, though, you'll find that with these allocations is GC allocs, it's because you're creating new objects. You might be instantiating a new list for no reason when you could just reuse and cache that same one list. Just clear the list and re-add to it. You might be instantiating some new game objects when you could just be pooling them and reusing them. So look for your allocations for opportunities to fix that as well. But again, make sure that you're sorting. If you're not sorting by the biggest thing, then you're just wasting your time. You want to hit the, the big fish first, get the things that matter the most, and then get on to the other things um, as they become the thing that matters the most next. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that performance and profiling becomes part of your normal routine. I generally like to hop into the profiler once a week or so with a project or maybe more often if I'm making big changes or seeing performance drop, I'll usually pop up that little stats tab, kind of get an idea of how my game's going. And if I see a big drop, I'll do a quick check to see if there's maybe something simple that I can change. Usually the fixes are easy and that's what you want to look for. So look for them early, keep optimizing along the way and prevent your game from, well, not being unplayable. I hope this was helpful. Again, please hit the thumbs up button, like, subscribe, share, drop a comment down below if it was, and I will see you in the next video.